Hey guys, and welcome to my English build order. In this build order, I'll be showing you two variations. One off of a single town center. A single town center English build order is most suitable for applying early aggression. The great range and bonus damage that English longbowmen offer makes them a great harassing tool into many different factions. Abbasid Dynasty, Holy Roman Empire, and Delhi Sultanate are all very harassable by early longbowmen. And it is also possible to use longbowman aggression in an English mirror if you see they're being more greedy or less smooth on their macro than you are. You can even use longbowman aggressively with good, uh, with good protection into Mongols, Rus, or into the French. But it needs to be backed up with some good spear defense. Then I'll also be showing you a two town center opener. A very fast second town center with its main purpose of booming economically, getting a larger economy earlier on. These two build orders will be following one another, both in this video. I'm going to be starting by showing you off a two town center opener. And you can see the build order right here. There's also a link included in the description below with an imager of that build so that you can have it next to you or this video next to you when you're trying it out by yourself. I've also included some benchmarks that you can try to hit, that you know what villager count, what villager distribution, and what unit count you should have at various points in the game. Your timings may differ a bit depending on what map you're playing on, and also depending on where the resources exactly are, how the map randomized. There's also some optimizations that you can do that I'll be explaining in this build that will help make the build faster. But don't worry too much if you're a few seconds or even a few dozen seconds behind. Learning in RTS is about the fun of the refinement, but it's also about accepting our mistakes and getting better over time, hopefully. So let's have fun with it. Now, without further ado, let's start the game and I'm gonna be showing you a very fast two town center opener with its main purpose of defending whatever attack comes at us. Many people that see that you have a second town center will try to ram rush all in you. In this particular game, I'm going to be simulating a Holy Roman Empire opponent. Holy Roman Empire can have a ram rush with men at arms somewhere between the eight to nine minute mark. You should be expecting anywhere from 10 to 20 men at arms, uh, somewhere between the eight to 10 minute mark if they perform it very well and very quickly. And that's what we'll be trying to stop theoretically. So let's jump into it. When the game begins, we're gonna be putting all our villagers on sheep and quickly move the sheep as close to the town center as possible. We'll also be trying to find as many sheep around the map as we can. Our scout will collect all of the ones near. Now a cool trick that chat just taught me is to move the sheep as close as possible to the town center. And this will allow your villagers to cut down in production time. Uh, in gathering time, because they don't need to walk back. Your first new villager also goes to sheep production, to sheep gathering. When you have seven on food, your next new villager is gonna go to the gold and start a mining camp there. The sheep can be moved very close to your town center to cut down on gathering movement speed by taking the sheep and then moving it past the town center in this way, it stays as close as possible to the actual hitbox of the town center. Your next new villager, when you have mining camp building, is going to make a house. And the house will be close to your town center to block for any future possible ram rush pathing. Your next new villager is going to go to gold. And the house villager will come back to sheep right when it's done with a shift command. Your villager redistribution should look like this right now. 802. At that moment, we're going to be rallying a villager to wood. And when it finishes, we're going to immediately queue up a lumber camp. Keep bringing back sheep. They are important to keep up our food production. The map that we're playing on right now is Altai or Altai. Your results of timings may vary depending on what map you're on and how everything has spawned. I like to move my scout with control group two past my town center and my sheep on three, and then move them into the town center as such. And that's gonna optimize the mining that they do on the sheep. 
and will refer to sheep mining as something that actually makes sense and isn't the wrong word, the wrong use of a word. We keep our eye on the gold vein and check when it drops to 3,900. When that has happened, they are carrying enough gold to start our council hall, which we will do with the gold villagers. We're looking to bring back more sheep. Five more gold, and then we can start the council hall. Okay, return and make the council hall. And then rally on wood. When that happens, we're going to take four villagers. And without returning the food that they're carrying, we're going to put them on stone. Your villager distribution at 250 will look like this. 4400 zero, zero, with four currently on the mining camp. When that happens, at 304, your next new villager also goes to stone. Note that all of the villagers will drop off the food they are currently carrying. Whoop. As long as you don't give a follow-up command to the villagers, their last command must be to have built the mining camp. Only then are they carrying their current deposit. Are they dropping off their current deposit? When the council of villagers finish, as I said before, they should be on wood afterwards. Each new villager is currently going to wood as well. The scout brings back more sheep and we control group, group it to three, bring it back to the town center. And when we need to, at 18 food, we're gonna make a house with a wood villager. More sheep have been found. Let's bring them back into the fold and we'll keep using the same trick to get sheep as close as possible to the town center. We also need to scout our opponent and find any more sheep that are contestable on the map. Wood gathering is going nicely. We are targeting 400 wood and 300 stone as quickly as possible. We should also be thinking about the location of our second town center. We ideally want it on one, on one, two, three, or even four resources. The more resources it's on, the more flexibility it gives us later on in the game. All right, we've gathered enough stone. We have chosen the deer camp. Deer are a great source of food and they can boost our production of food while not needing as much villagers to do it. If you're not quite ready yet to build the resources, use pockets of two villagers to kill some deer and then start it. Those five villagers from stone will be starting the town center alongside with any new villagers that we, that we finish. I say any new villagers, but what I really mean is two additional ones. Every now and then I like to take two villagers and kill deer that blunder too close to the town center. Make sure to use two different ones each time so that they have their attack timing ready. This way we get the bodies in the right place for more efficient gathering. All right, it's 550. We're now going to put three villagers on gold and every new villager goes to wood still. We're gonna start our barracks. And now we need to make sure that we have non-stop villager production. The reason we have three villagers on gold right now is because we are looking to get several upgrades. And because we are simulating facing a Holy Roman Empire player, we also want to make sure that we get some gold for men at arms production. Other useful upgrades include setup camp, men at arms, uh, men at arms feudal upgrade to take them from Vanguard and make them early, as well as getting a blacksmith for one attack upgrade for range for longbowmen. This allows longbowmen to pierce men at arms armor better. If they get one armor upgrade and you have no attack upgrades, your longbowmen will do two damage per hit. If you have an attack upgrade and they have no, uh, they have no upgrade for armor, you will do four damage, which is double. 
And if no one upgrades, you're doing three damage a hit. Okay, we have a lot on lumber. We have uh, 13 on lumber right now. We're gonna make a blacksmith. Need to make sure we keep getting food production. And actually, I think if all along I had kept 10 on lumber and no more, that would have been enough. So we're a little bit, a little bit off where we could be with the build. Gold-wise, we're in a pretty good spot. We still have non-stop villager production, and that's the most important thing. Once we have 75 gold, we can get set up camp upgrades. Or we can get the... Actually, what I think is more important is the uh, range attack upgrade. Yeah, I will say that 10, 10 villagers on wood is better. And as you can see, the beginning of the build order showed that this is possible. Uh, the notes at the beginning of the build, at the beginning of this video. Which is a retcon. <laughs> Keep making houses. And keep making units whenever possible. Yeah. Our attack upgrade is coming in. And we're gonna look, where are we at the 8 minute 40 mark? 7 longbowmen, 2 men at arms. At this time, they can have about 12 men at arms. So if they come in right now, you're gonna keep making units and not get distraught. You're gonna make a mill on the berries. You're gonna take villagers, put those on the berries as well. One more on gold. These are going to take down sheep that came in, but we can't necessarily rely on sheep. So now at nine, uh, at nine twenty, they can have something like uh, at nine thirty. They can have when I did it without any, without getting harassed at all. They can have like 15 men at arms. But you've got your attack upgrade. You're gonna kite them, you're gonna attack them and keep running away. Now, let's say if you haven't been aggressive, but you still feel, you still followed this build order, you could start being aggressive yourself. As the English, when you move out, as you'll see every time, you're gonna wanna bring outpost villagers. Right now we have a very food imbalanced lumber economy. At this point, there's already so many different things that could have happened that you can't really be following a build order anymore beyond the 10 minute mark. And even at this point, you'll find that there's a lot of deviation depending on the exact situation, everything that happened. So it's most important to get the first eight minutes right. And then after that, you start responding and adapting. But I hope that you came up with a few good habits here for the early TC and that you liked how quick the timing was of that second TC so that you can start booming away. You'll notice that I didn't go for any economy upgrades and that's because it doesn't fit when trying to defend against what you should expect the most after a second TC, which is a big ram rush all in. That's why we don't get forestry, lumber mining, wheelbarrow and so on and so forth. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. And now I'm gonna show you the build order for a single town center with longbowmen aggression and spears to defend your longbowmen. And now you've made it to the second part of this build order. We're gonna be going with one town center and longbowmen aggression. The main purpose of the starter of this build is using nine longbowmen, which each, each deal six damage to one shot enemy villagers. Once we've got nine to 10 longbowmen, one extra for good measure possibly, we're gonna be playing aggressively and we're gonna be trying to snipe off villagers here and there. Instead of going to a second town center to improve our economy, we're using nine villagers to one shot their vills. And we're using nine uh, longbowmen to one shot their vills to hurt their economy. Either one works as a way to get ahead. After using longbowmen, we're gonna be using spears to defend our longbowmen as most factions best counter is using horsemen or feudal knights in order to counter our longbows. Once we see that we can no longer be on the map with our longbowmen because of the counters, it's okay to fall back and to macro behind it. And in this build order, I'm gonna be showing you how to get the fastest possible nine to 10 longbowmen 
and then fallback and macro. You ready to start? Here's the build. You've been seeing it, I suppose. Thanks, editor. And we're going to start now so you can play along with me and you can compare benchmarks. I always recommend people to check by 3.30, by 4.30, by 5.30, by 6.30, where you're at in the game. How many villagers have you got? How's your villager distribution compared to mine? How many units do you have? And of course, you should also make notes of key timings, like the time of the start of my council hall, how many villagers I put on it, the time of my first longbowman popping out and my ninth one popping out, those things. Your results may vary a bit depending on which map you're playing on. I'm simulating an opponent who is Abbasid Dynasty, who is harassable. French royal knights may be a little scarier, and an English longbow mirror, you may not be able to be aggressive at all, unless you're confident you can micro better or your build is cleaner. Hopefully, with my build, it will be. You ready? Let's start in three, two, one, and let's go. First thing you're gonna do, all your villagers on sheep and move the sheep closer to the town center as you kill it. You start two new villagers, or as many as you have food for, and you bring back extra sheep. You, you group these sheep in control group three and you bring them back to the town center. Then your scout goes on the map as you rally your extra villagers on the sheep and you make sure that the sheep walk as closely as possible to the town center. Pick up all the sheep that you can find around it and you've now got seven villagers on food. The next villager that comes out goes to the gold mine and starts a mining camp. And then you don't have to do any other actions after that. It will immediately start gathering from the nearest thing that the building can interact with, which in this case is the gold. So you don't have to give a shift command into the gold. The next villager that comes out is going to start immediately with building a house. You can't be late with this. If you're worried about it, you can take a food villager, build a house and shift click it back on the sheep. You've got six seconds to build that house so that you don't get blocked or as they call it, housed, which would stop your next villager from coming out. Once the house villager is done, he goes back, shift click on the food and your next new villager goes to gold. You will then have the same opening as in the two TC opener of an 8020 villager distribution. Once you've got a nice pocket of sheep, you gotta bring those back to your town center and you're gonna rally your town center on the wood. Make sure to build a lumber camp with the one that finishes. Your sheep, in the same trick that I've shown before, are going to walk around the town center in as close as proximity to the town center as possible, while also being as close as possible to your uh, current villagers. So they don't need to circumnavigate around the town center to find the next sheep to slaughter and gather food from. Feel free to queue up a few villagers so that you don't have any gaps. In games like these, having gaps in villager production hurts not just your next villager that comes out, but also the one afterwards. You will be one second late on the next villager, and on the one after, and on the one after. And by the time you've made 20 villagers, you'll be one villager slower already. Okay, you're gonna control group four villagers, through uh, two from food and the two from gold. You take the two from gold, and then you take the two from food, and you make the, the council hall. With four villagers, as you try to gather more sheep. Depending on the opponent's scout route and yours, you may find that your sheep results differ from uh, time to time, as you may be fishing behind the net. Now we're gonna make a mill. We're gonna make sure that we've got more villagers going to wood now. We're gonna bring these sheep back to the mill. The reason we're making a mill now is so that later when we're busy embroiled in a fight, we can transition to berry farming when we run out of sheep. Now you need six villagers. You need six villagers on food and 14 on wood to support non-stop villager production, uh, non-stop longbowman production, allegedly. We're gonna have seven on food, six on wood. Then we take two from the council hall and we send those to sheep as well. And we take two from the council hall and those go to wood. 
every next villager also goes to wood. So when the council hall finishes, you should find out that you've got nine on food and everything else on lumber, on wood. I don't want to bring back too many sheep in this demo to show you that it's not reliant on the amount of sheep that you have. Not entirely. You need some, but you don't need all of them. All right, council hall finishes. You're now gonna queue up as many longbowmen as you can and as many villagers as you can. We'll make another house to make sure that we don't get blocked. We're gonna find out where the opponent is and make non-stop villagers. With nine on food, as you see, on sheep, and everything else goes to wood. And try not to do forcible returns of villagers. They should be bringing back enough for practically non-stop uh, longbow production. As you see, we're gonna have maybe a small gap, about three seconds downtime, and there it starts again. Kill any wolves in between, and keep up longbow production. Once we have a total of nine longbowmen, we can either we can reveal ourselves at that time, or we can start attacking before it. This pretty much depends on your multitasking. We now have eight longbowmen with the ninth in production. We've never stopped villager production, which means we can macro really cleanly behind it. Nine longbowmen with one more coming. To show you the one-shotting, I'm going to choose not to start attacking until I've got all of them, so that it's going to be more repeatable for you. You could pull villagers off of food now, but I find it's usually best to just keep them where they are and rebalance your economy in a gradual way. So we're now going to make a barracks which will be to protect us from future cavalry, horses, camels, whatever. We stop longbowman production for a bit and we start thinking about what to do next. Then with our longbows, we start poking at villagers while still making non-stop wood, wood gathering villagers. Now we're gonna start navigating around the base and try to pick off villagers. At this time, it's good to put three again on gold to make a blacksmith so that we can get armor upgrades and other upgrades, such as the healing from setup camp. You should be the favorite right now. They can't have that much defense against this kind of thing yet. Every villager you kill makes your macro better compared to theirs. You can also use Scout as a line of sight giver so that you can shoot around the trees if he's mining wood from here. We can see that our food is piling up. We can use that for spears at home. We can also cho choose to start reproducing longbow, but I want to show you mostly what it looks like when you're not making any extra longbow right now and you're getting ready for their next transition. At this point, you could also take five villagers and make a stone camp to prepare for a second town center. But I think if you're doing economic damage, that is not required. Let's get the longbow set up camp. Now, any wood gathered is never wasted. Wood gathered can give you especially as the, uh, as the English, a very nice transition into farms, which as the English, you're incentivized to do much earlier than others. This is done by pressing Q, W, Q, W, uh, sorry, uh, Q, A, and then holding over the farm and pressing farm a few times. If you want, you can split your villagers, but they can do it themselves as well. Every five villagers that you have, or six, you can make more farms and villagers. This is a great source of food. The English actually gather faster from farms that are around mills, as seen by the influence area. So it is very, now we get the attack upgrade. It's very nice to just start 
getting farms early so that you don't need to go far on the map and you keep it simple for yourself to defend a singular location. Let's say that we've been driven back an hour before and we start kind of camping with our longbowmen at home and spears. You can see that our economy is in a great spot. Remake your lumber camp now and then. And if you want to, you can start thinking about one base castle age, for which you will need about six to seven villagers on gold and a nice diversification of your food sources. These farms, the few berries that we still have, and perhaps a diversification into the deer can all be a nice part of diversifying your food. We've got our attack upgrade. Now we can get armor upgrades against whatever he's doing. If he's ranged, you get iron undermash. If he's melee, you get fitted leather work. We're gonna go up to about six villagers on gold while keeping up production. And again, depending on what he's doing now, you can make another barracks for more spears. What's also possible is that you do not get any of this gold, you do not get the barracks, and you keep so much on wood, and you get this upgrade, Siege Engineering. We pull everyone away from berries and sheep. We put everything on wood for a 13-24 split. We keep making units and villagers, of course. And then we prepare for a ram rush. Many times you find actually that the army that we've got now is perfectly able to finish off an opponent. And while 11 minutes is late for it, I was getting some gold, I was getting some farms. Instead of farms, if you feel you're the, you are the aggressor, this wood could have gone towards rams. You could focus primarily on bushes and then on the deer and keep up pressure. Build two rams and attack. Using the rams to tank the town center, longbowmen to pick off his units and spears to protect your longbowmen from horses. That's my aggressive build order. You can transition to anything you want, either a macro game with stone in the second town center or with six on gold and a nice amount of food to go to the second uh, transition, the, the third age. Or you can ram all in. Three solid options after a strong harass early game. Finally, which one would you go to the next age with? The White Tower or the King's Palace? If I'm on two TC, two town centers, I should always like to go for the White Tower. I will place it in an aggressive location. For example, to protect the relic or maybe a gold location that I'm getting. You can also go for the King's Palace. On certain maps, they play out more defensively and you may still be on one TC then King's Palace is still a great defensive foothold with the ability to also double produce villagers afterwards, which can make your economy go woo. Then, one more thing to say. The English have the defensive bonus of attack speed. This is around any tower, town center or keep. Because of this, it is extremely rewarding to build a line of towers towards your opponent, as I am currently highlighting. If you're noticing that your harass is going very well, or you're on a map like Highview with lots of these stealth forests where you can't get good vision for your longbowmen to attack their units, towers are a great help. They offer vision through the fog of war, through the stealth forest, and they give you that fallback point. Either to put your archers inside with the F hotkey, and also to give that attack speed bonus that the English enjoy. Any ram rush is going to be even more effective if you build these towers to protect you. And if you look at some of my English games on my YouTube channel, you'll also find that I do this often. All right, hope you enjoyed it. Good luck with either the double TC opener or the single TC opener with aggression. Hope you enjoyed it and you've seen some nice clean builds that you can now use for your own games.